To thee we come, O Lord our God. <coughs> so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of conscience. And now let us recite together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I cry aloud to God, cry to God to hear me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you care for us above all other creatures. Free us from all anxiety and turmoil of heart, that we may seek first your kingdom and submit to your reign. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Creator and Redeemer of all the faithful, grant unto the souls of your departed brother and sister, Earl and Arjeet, Shah, forgiveness of all their sins. May our devout prayers obtain for them the pardon of the resurrection as promised by our Savior. We ask all of this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever.
first reading is a reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me, my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sin does he deal with us, nor does he require us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is kind and merciful. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. It is actually reported that there is morality among you, and of a kind that is not found even among pagans. For a man is living with his father's wife, and you are arrogant, ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. For though absent in body, I am present in spirit, and as if present, I have already pronounced judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus on the man who has done such a thing. When you are assembled and my spirit is present with the power of our Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Because he is found by those who test him not, and he manifests himself to those who do not disbelieve him. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. Through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. No man, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. <clears throat> Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valued than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil, toil nor spin, Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O men of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, 
For what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his <coughs> righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. This is the gospel of the Lord. Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nick Bench of Paphilonius is Christus. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Words taken from St. Paul's letter, his second letter to Timothy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. The life of St. Paul has always fascinated me, from what he started off as, to what he became. He started off as an avid persecutor, persecutor of the early Christian church prior to his conversion and later became an avid believer. Of the 27 books of the New Testament, Paul is attributed to writing 14 of these books. Over 50% of the New Testament. During his life, he made four missionary journeys in approximately 15 years. And it is believed that he traveled over 10,000 miles. In his second book to the Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 25 through 29, he describes some of his various hardships for the sake of the gospel. He writes, I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely and been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger of false believers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. 
I have been cold and naked. Beside everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak? And do not I feel weak? You know, St. Paul, who was at the end of his life imprisoned in Rome, waiting trial, and would soon be put to death, wrote many of his letters to the church. Two of his letters were to Timothy, a young priest. In reflecting on everything that he endured, Paul wrote these words to Timothy, as found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. You know, my brothers and sisters, as we will soon be upon the great Lent, it is again a time in which there is a crossroad of our faith. We are reminded in today's gospel that no man can serve two masters. It is during the holy time of Lent that we are called upon to examine our faith and to reflect upon our commitment to Christ and not what the world can give unto us. I am reminded of a phrase that was spoken by Sir John Hunt who led the 1953 expedition to Mount Everest and who helped to place Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay on the summit of the roof of the world. John Hunt wrote, There is no height nor depth that the spirit of man guided by a higher spirit cannot attain. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I invite you on a journey as we will recall the final years of the life of Jesus. Let his words that we find today in the Gospel of Matthew bring to us enlightenment, illumination, and a firm commitment, just as Paul made a firm commitment, to follow and to worship the Lord. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. This is a promise that he has made to whoever would follow him and for us. It will be a time in which we will follow him to his own crucifixion. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of the earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, the one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Father, you sent us the Holy Spirit as promised by your Son to sanctify us and guide us in our hearts that we may better serve you. May all our petitions be received and blessed by you this day. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Polish National Catholic Church and the Union of Scranton that they may be a beacon for and a home to all people to aspire in pristine faith to be one with the undivided Christian church. In faith we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the clergy of our church, that they may leave the faithful and trusted to their care to a greater knowledge and love of you, our Heavenly Father. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved and holy name of Jesus perish, that as people, <clears throat> that as people, they may be inspired by the teachings of your beloved Son, Jesus, and work in building your kingdom here on earth. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for the hungry and the homeless, for those who are alone without anyone to care for them. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who are in residence and extended care facilities, as well as all those who die for their homes, in faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and Lord of peace, hear our prayers which we offer to you this day. As we approach the great Lent, guide us by your Holy Spirit, that we may truly walk in your light, which illuminates our way unto you through the cross of our Lord. Help us to serve others as your Son taught us. In your most holy name, we ask all of this. In his blessed name, amen. You satisfy the desire of those who fear you. Lord, hear their cry and save them. Accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. 
Let us pray, Almighty Father, accept these gifts which we offer to you in faith and trust, as well as our prayers for the repose of the souls of our brother and sister, Earl and our Jean Shaw. May this offering which we make unto you bring to mind your son's suffering on the cross. We ask all of this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You give us the season of anticipation that takes us from the joy of your incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting and of contemplation of your passion. As we prepare to abstain from worldly trappings, open our hearts and minds to a spirit of true contrition and of loving service and reverence to you. Therefore, we join with the voices of the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels and all your angels, along with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory this day, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Today let us offer the Eucharistic prayer number five, which is the canon of the Union of Utrecht, as found on page 92. Please be seated. Blessed are you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He then established a lasting memorial of your salvation on the evening in which he willingly surrendered himself he took bread gave you thanks blessed it and broke it saying take this all of you and eat it for this is my body which is given for you When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way, he gave you thanks, blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So we recall before you, Father, the incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on the cross. Therefore you have raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth, 
every knee shall bow. And every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer this sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving, and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit and fill these gifts with his life-giving power, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son. Grant that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord, and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the company of Mary, the mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, with holy Hildebrand and all the saints, together with Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him is the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, Art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Please be seated. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now, let us as fellow believers in our Lord Jesus Christ, offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be unto you. My brothers and sisters, turn to your neighbor and greet them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My brothers and sisters, let us pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are you if you hunger and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled. The body and blood of Christ.
I command you, be firm and steadfast. Do not fear nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord be with you. Pray, O Lord our God, when fears threaten us and doubt, worry, be our refuge and our strength. Grant us courage that through this Holy Communion we will follow your Son wherever he may lead. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with the Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. May our brother and sister, Earl and R. Jean Shaw, whom we commemorate these prayers and honor, be joined with you in the New Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and upon your loved ones. And may you follow Christ wherever he leads. Thanks be to God. Go forth and proclaim yourselves as his disciples. Thanks be to God. We've come to realize that we can't take care of everything during a parish committee meeting, even if it lasts for two hours. So anyway, there are things that need to be brought to the attention of the parish. And so if you can, please be a part of our discussion in the parish hall. But, excuse me, we have an auditor's meeting. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, just as I didn't know about the auditor's meeting. I, I'm sorry. My apologies. No, one of the things that we will need to talk about will be the weekend of the 27th through the 29th, uh, where I'm going to be attending um, the National Mission in Evangelism in Temperance, Michigan. And we talked about this last week about the, um, the time where Father Chodronesky can come and celebrate. He will not be able to offer Mass at 4 o'clock on Saturday because he has 5 o'clock Polish Mass. And the only other problem is we talked about Saturday evening at 7 o'clock. Well, at 7 o'clock we have the meeting of AA and there is up to 40 people that attend and so the parking lot is usually pretty much filled. And there's a concern of our people parking far away to be able to come to church. So it seems that probably the best choice is to have Mass on Sunday at 11 o'clock, but this is something that we will talk about downstairs. I did have a chance to meet yesterday with a couple members of the parish committee, the executive committee, and there were certain things that were discussed and there are things that need to, brought to, to be brought to the attention of our parish family. I bring to mind this week, Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, 
morning devotions at 845. 9 o'clock Holy Mass of the Eucharist in the contemporary rite, as well as the blessing and distribution of ashes to the faithful. And at 7 o'clock in the evening, there will be the Holy Mass of the Eucharist in the traditional rite, along with the distribution of ashes to the faithful. Since we'll be entering into the season of Lent every Friday, at 7 o'clock there is Lenten penitential service. And this coming Friday, we will have the first part of Bitter Lamentations uh, to the Polish, it's Goszkozala. I ask that you please set aside a time where you can come from your busy schedules to take a half hour to 45 minutes during one of the penitential services. We alternate between bitter lamentations and the Stations of the Cross. I bring to mind that next Saturday at 11 o'clock, the central signorate of our diocese will meet with our diocesan bishop at the Holy Mother of the Rosary Church in Chicopee. There is more information that can be read in today's bulletin. I bring to mind next Sunday, the first Sunday of Lent, 7.45, there is a choir rehearsal. At 8.45, there is a general confession. So please, if you can, during the season of Lent, come for the general confession. I know there are those that come from a little bit of a distance. But if you come at 9 o'clock or 5 minutes after 9, it does no good. So please, make it a point to come for the general confession at 8.45. Also, after the Holy Mass of the Eucharist, there will be the monthly meeting of the Ladies' Adoration of the Most Blessed Sacrament. Kathy LaFleur handed to me a spring schedule for the uh, making of Gwonki for our uh, Palm Sunday food and bake sale. And I also incorporated in the bulletin the, um, the schedule for making pierogi, which will actually start on March the 7th. Uh, my brothers and sisters, finally, I apologize. I have been experiencing problems with, with my computer. Uh, I, I was talking to a technician, a couple of technicians, each has a different solution, but as it turns out, when it went to send the bulletin to our people, I was having a difficult time logging in, and at the same time, I could only send to four recipients at a time the parish bulletin. So this will be resolved one way or another before next weekend, and I thank you for your patience. Are there any other announcements to be made? Surely. Father, I just want to remind everyone that the lace dowry, we still are collecting food and hats and mittens for community action. That's still going to continue for another month. So please keep that in mind. Thank you. 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 And surely, I wanted to also impress, uh, mostly to you, next Saturday is very important uh, for the senior meeting. I already have a couple of members of the committee that will be, uh, will be going to the meeting, and I would like to have others. This is an opportunity where we not only hear the bishop talk about the upcoming the diocesan synod, but most importantly, it will be an opportunity for people from different parishes of our seniorate to come together and to have dialogue. Surely, if I'm not mistaken, you had mentioned yesterday you were in Manchester, uh, New Hampshire. No, Connecticut. Manchester, Manchester, Connecticut. And you were mentioning that there was approximately? 32 people, which includes Bishop and his wife. Wonderful. So again, please, I bring this to your attention. Uh, it will start at 11 o'clock. It should be over by 12, 1230. Uh, very, very uh, informal. Um, so please, if you can, let me know. God bless you. Have a good day.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of our late departed brother and sister in blessed memory, for Earl and R. Jean Shaw, as well as for all our faithful departed. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.